Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Jack. Jack is a DPO and also based out in Germany. And I personally observe his activity on LinkedIn where he was doing a lot of content around data protections and all that. So I thought, you know, we can we can use this opportunity and uh, uh, utilize the time of Jack to share about the information on DPOs and all that. And today agenda is all about and what is the role of a DPO, myth and facts, you know, how to become a DPO and how DPO works in the organization. Thank you, Jack, for coming for this particular session. Thank you so much for inviting me, Rob. I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel and I'm happy to be here and uh, provide some experience and knowledge. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for the kind word. And Jack, I can, as, I, as I can see your experience, you know, you are CIPPE, CIPM, you know, LLB, DPO and all that. So, you know, one question which I always ask from my 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 speakers, uh, who basically part of my session is, how you started a journey in 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 this particular field. I'm sure it's not your first job as a DPO. So, how you started your journey? Can you just share your five minutes on the area? Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. Um, first of all, I studied uh, business law in Germany, and it was my first. Um, connection to data uh, data protection. Mm -hmm. um, it was 2017, wow. and you know, 2018 we got uh, the GDPR here in Germany, so it was really mm. popular topic. And I had uh, no idea about data protection at this time, so I started to read some books uh, about it, and I found it amazing and really interesting as a topic for a business lawyer um, especially and so i um yeah uh, developed uh, this topic for myself and then um tried to um yeah uh, gain more knowledge okay <laughs> and uh, certification cool. uh, and started uh, after that uh, as a freelance uh, consultant and then um start my position as a consultant here in Germany by uh, telecom. Right, that's great. So, so Jack, just need to understand, you know, what is a necessary skill? So actually, what is the role of a DPO? Okay, that was my first question, you know, what is the role of DPO? And what is the day-to-day -day activity of DPO? If someone joined DPO and, and the one who watching this video, you know, he want to know about what is the role of DPO and what is the, uh, what actually he does in the company? Absolutely. I would start with the first question, but before that, I would like to provide some understanding about the terms, mm. because uh, what I can see now, um, the people talk about privacy, data protection, and uh, some of them mix uh, the terms. So actually, um, this is important to understand that privacy itself, it is a general term, and it is also a uh, um, human right, yeah, yeah. Uh, which states in uh, Universal Declaration yeah. of Human Rights and European uh, Convention of Human Rights. Um, and uh, the data protection, it is um, yeah, more about protecting any information relating to an um, identified or identifiable natural person. Uh, but uh, all of us need to understand that data protection isn't uh, information security. Data protection is about protecting people behind the data, okay. about their uh, r rights and freedoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And um, the area of information security protects the, the data, Yeah, and data protection the, the main idea is to protect rights and freedoms of Freedom. data subjects. Um, yeah, as a as a DPO, um, we have um, to um, gain different skills. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people uh, that came uh, to this role as um, um, you know a lawyer or they have legal background. And I know a lot of people that uh, have a technical background. Okay. And for this role, you need both. I would okay. Say. Wow. Um, so, on one hand, you need the understanding <laughs> of um, legal methodology uh, and uh, legal frameworks, how you can solve 
uh, legal case. On the other hand, you need technical understanding, understanding of IT systems, um, how actually uh, understanding of information security as well. Mm -hmm. So it is important for the role to gain um, knowledge in both areas, in my Excellent. opinion. Yeah, uh, who is a data protection officer exactly, or uh, what is what is uh, you know like the uh, real life activities of DPO? Yeah. Uh, DPO um, consult and supports the controller mm -hmm. um, and uh, provide um, consulting knowledge to to the management and to the controller in okay. the company. Mm -hmm. So this is important to understand that data protection officer is not responsible for compliance mm -hmm. in the company. It is a management or the mm -hmm. controller, we say in, in, in GDPR. Um, and a data protection officer is a consultant and he, he supports management in uh, implementing uh, processes and data protection management system for instance. So if I take if I take example about the process and data protection system and all that, what what exactly this process? Because I'm sure not everyone from the same background is watching this video and might be someone is uh, aspiring to be a DPO. So what do you mean with this data protection process and system and all that? Uh, yeah, so um, data processing um, means any automated or uh, manual operation Mm -hmm. uh, carried out on personal data, mm -hmm. yeah? And then the question comes, what is personal data? <laughs> and personal data, um, this is information uh, that uh, relates uh, to an uh, indefinable person, um, either directly or indirectly, yeah? Okay. For instance, name, surname, but also ID card number which is not directly leads to your person, but you can identify a person um, with adding some additional factors. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for sure, it is also important to understand the role of controller, uh, who is a controller in, mm -hmm. in, in uh, this situation. So controller is the person um, or, um, yeah, or legal entity, mm -hmm. which uh, determine the purpose and means of the processing of personal data. Okay. Yeah. An example is I am a company, maybe in, I, I don't know, um, big IT company. I develop my um, software as a service and uh, I need some personal data from my customer to develop this software. Okay. So I am a controller because I decide, um, I, I can decide uh, about means and purposes of data processing, uh, why I need the data, how I process the data, and so on. Yeah, this is this is an important term to understand because con controller is responsible for compliance mm -hmm. in the company. Um, yeah, and data protection officer, data protection officer supports the the, the controller in uh, implementation of. Um, compliance and um, in general um, you will in the in the in the practical case you will normally have to implement a data protection management system system in your company um, maybe one one important point I want to mention um, through the regulation GDPR um, we got um, Prohibit, uh, prohibited, it is prohibited to process uh, the personal data in general, mm -hmm. unless unless you have a legal base for that. Okay. So just imagine, in general, it is prohibited to process um, personal data mm -hmm. unless you have a legal base. It means Great. just for processing uh, personal data, you need to find a legal base first, mm -hmm. and then you can process the personal data. Okay. Any example you would like to add with this, with any case study, if you have, if, if it takes less time, five, ten minutes to explain? Uh, sure. I could uh, share my screen, maybe. Yeah, let me give you a share. presenter, right? See my screen, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So this is a data privacy handbook uh, mm -hmm. from PwC. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, which I really like um, because it gives you an understanding of general concepts uh, uh, of data privacy and data protection. Mm-hmm. So you can see here the general the terms list, yeah. and the general principles, mm-hmm. which are really important to understand. So it is lawfulness, fairness, and transparency, purpose limitation, data minimization, mm-hmm. currency, storage limitation, integrity and confidentiality, and accountability. Yeah, Accountability means that um, the uh, controller, business owner in our case, mm. um, is obliged to demonstrate Compliance. Okay. GDPR. Um, yeah. Personal data. We already mentioned what can what can uh, be personal data. Yeah. ID card number, mm-hmm. online identities, IP address as well as personal data, or um, our voice recordings. Yeah. Um, and we have also specific area uh, sense sensitive personal data which uh, stand, states in Article 9 of GDPR, something like uh, political or religio- uh, religious uh, beliefs, uh, yeah. racial or ethnic origin, and uh, GDPR um, tried to protect this data uh, uh, with a high level, high level protection. Let's see. Yeah. Um, here you can find the terms uh, of um, what is what who is the controller for instance yeah yeah um the description um and uh, the, the main individual uh, rights the individual rights it is like the central uh the central point in gdpr mm-hmm. um you, you you need to understand because as i said um the gdpr is about uh, protecting rights and freedoms of um, data subjects, and data data subjects they have different rights, like right to access person their own personal data, right to erasure, right to correct uh, personal data, uh, and so on. And um, this is how um, GDPR gives uh, the control of uh, personal data back to the uh, okay. To the people, to the persons. So, Jack, normally when it comes to the DPO part and all that, when you're implementing any functions and all that, so is it a difficult task for a DPO to implement GDPR? Or, you know, if mm-hmm. I want to ask you about the documentation sequence, okay, mm-hmm. if you go by the ISO, we have a context for leadership, then five, six, seven. So, can you just share your highlight? Can you can you highlight this important things? You know the sequence of the documentation. What is required to be comply with GDPR for a DPO? Yeah, for for, for my ex- in my experience, I think the most important uh, point when you start in mm-hmm. the new company mm-hmm. as a DPO is mm-hmm. to get uh, management <clears throat> support. Okay. Because um, in my experience, um, maybe you can uh, also observe it um, from, from your experience, um, mm-hmm. the management things. Okay, now we have a DPO. Uh, we pay money for this mm-hmm. service mm-hmm. and we are, we are done with this task. Now <laughs> DPO will carry out everything and we have no responsibility. The problem is solved. Um, and this is absolutely wrong case because okay. G- GDPR states that um, that controller is responsible for compliance and not a DPO. So you, you have to start uh, with, um, I would say, uh, training of mm-hmm. management mm-hmm. Uh, with a, um, awareness training of management and um, to get to get management support and uh, to um, provide understanding of uh, responsibilities mm-hmm. which management have, it is um, necessary and really important. So I would start with that okay. um, because in, in my previous experience, just uh, the year I started um, in, in a company, I uh, missed this point and um, it was, um, it was a problem <laughs> because uh, the management had this idea, okay, we pay money for DPO, 
um, now um, we can, uh, you know, do everything else, do our business, and data protection is not our uh, responsibility anymore. Okay. So this is the first step to get management support and to clarify um, responsibilities. Um, the second st uh, step would be uh, gap analysis. Yeah? Okay. Just to see, okay, uh, which kind of uh, processes the okay. company have, okay. um, which kind of personal data uh, uh, the company process in, in, in the processes, uh -huh. and in which um, IT systems we okay. um, have the data and uh, the, the, the processes. Um, so the gap analysis is, uh, is, is important instrument uh, <coughs> to start and to understand the okay. business, to understand what kind of personal data uh, they process, which kind of activities they do, and then you can um, assess um, the results mm -hmm. and provide, um, I would say, a, a set of controls or a measure a measure plan for implementation of management system. Okay. And what exactly does it mean, management system? The typical management system, in my understanding, um, have four um, steps. It is this, um, you know, typical. PDCA cyclus or mm -hmm. uh, Deming uh, circle. So plan, do, act, check. Okay. Yeah? True. And it never ends. <laughs> True. So the, the, the planning begins after the uh, assessment, after the gap analysis. Uh, you uh, plan uh, how to implement the processes, uh, the processes in, in, in your company. Um, then you implement them, and then you need to provide um, audits, yeah, internal mm -hmm. audits, because you uh, want to prove mm -hmm. uh, that your uh, data protection management works um, effective. So, and then you will discover some gaps for sure, uh, make uh, new measures and controls. And implement it again, and this is the uh, the circle that you have uh, always in 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 place. And this okay. is a job as a DPO to uh, you know to pro to, to implement this man this kind of management system, um, and um, to develop it. To um, yeah, awareness training is also a really important part mm -hmm. of uh, of DPO uh, role. Um, for sure, uh, and um, monitoring in general, monitoring of data protection compliance. Um, yeah, so that that's a good point. And uh, what are the necessary documentations we maintain in DPO? Like the uh, way yeah. we have ISMS policies there, we have uh, security functions. So when it comes to DPO as a DPO, what are the documentation he maintain? Yeah, great question. Actually, yeah. um. I would like, uh, in, in my opinion, it is um, like not really necessary, but uh, in my opinion, I would uh, start, always start with okay. data protection policy because the data protection policy is a high level document, yeah, like a roof document. And this is also a way how we can convince a management um, to, um, understand and to define objectives of data protection in the company. Yeah, just high level document, uh, which describes the objectives of uh, privacy data protection in the company. Mm -hmm. This is the, the first one I would, uh, I would um, suggest to do. <laughs> and after we get the management support, after we get uh, the uh, privacy policy, uh, we can uh, dive deeper into other documents. For instance, Europa, a record mm -hmm. of uh, acti of processing activities. Yeah, mm -hmm. because first of all, we need to understand which kind of personal data we actually process in our company. So it is a register. You can do a. a like a, a Excel sheet or use software, doesn't matter. Um, but it is uh, necessary to understand 
first which kind of personal data we process and in which departments and which processes. Okay. Um, and uh, when it comes to the requirement of uh, this uh, one concept, we are using PIA. So what is exactly uh, when dealing in DPOs, what is the role of PIA? Privacy um, impact assessment, the, yeah. Yeah, da data privacy impact exactly, assessment, exactly. PIA. Um, the, in general, data protection is always risk-based. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean? We consider risks for uh, freedoms and rights of data subjects. Mm -hmm. um, and we have always to assess our uh, process uh, activities and to understand what kind of risks uh, they could lead to. But in some specific cases, um, it is uh, there is additional uh, data protection impact assessment, which is mm -hmm. a DPIA. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, to provide. For instance, um, if we have a process um, activity uh, which would lead to high risks for uh, data subjects, we will need to provide. Um, you know, this uh, data protection impact assessment, okay. which is actually a risk management, yeah, like typical risk management part, uh, but specific for risks, um, risks for uh, freedoms and rights of um, data subjects. Okay. And it is performed by the DPO only, right? Uh, the the DPO can no 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 the DPO is just uh, advice the controller oh, okay. so the responsibility mm -hmm. to uh, perform uh, the data protection impact assessment as well is on uh, the controller oh, okay. and DPO helps the controller to do that. Oh wow! Yeah, we know we know this risk management part from information security for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. likelihood impact is a risk and this uh, data protection impact assessment <clears throat> have a similar methodology methodology mm -hmm. um, but we consider the risks uh, functions yeah freedom and rights that's great that's great that's great jack jack like as a dpo you know what is the top challenge you have faced when you're implementing gdpr and all mm -hmm. that and what is your recommendation for the aspiring mm -hmm. dpos yeah, first of all, we have two uh, possibilities how to appoint DPOs. We have internal DPOs and external DPOs. Hmm. Both um, possibilities have advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, internal uh, DPO is an employee of the company, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, external DPO is like outsourced uh, position, outsourced mm -hmm. role. Um, I would say, okay, challenges. Um, lack of um, knowledge in the mm -hmm. uh, organization. So um, it is important to provide um, awareness trainings mm -hmm. in the organization and specific trainings for different departments. Okay. Yeah? Not just only general training. You need to understand um, the problems and specific in different departments. For instance, mm -hmm. I provide different training for marketing department as a training for IT department. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, then uh, for sure, undocumented uh, data flows. Um, so um, you need a strong process, uh, how new process activities uh, should be documented. Because in our area, IT area, um, we are always on, you know, on hurry. <laughs> the uh, systems, the the systems, they are in in in, in these changing positions. We uh, try to to use something new, like mm -hmm. AI um, or some new different tools, and so on. And it is important uh, to uh, yeah to document data, new data flows, and to have to have process on that. Um. Yeah, what else? Um, lack of internal resources. It is always a problem. Um, the companies are trying to, uh, to uh, yeah, to save money <laughs> on everything. I agree. And um, it, is, it is always an issue 
um, lack of internal resources because they say, okay, we need to do our business, which is absolutely understandable. And everything else, compliance, uh, uh, information security, we will do it later. Yeah, so- that, that's happened. <laughs> that's that. I completely agree with that. And uh, so, um, Jack, you know, thanks for sharing this insight. You know, um, do you recommend any resources to be read by people who want to become a DPO? Uh, sure. I uh, recommend uh, to start um, by themselves mm-hmm. um, with just just with different books. EAPP is a good resource. APP, um, uh, then uh, European uh, Data Protection uh, Supervisor, European mm-hmm. Data Protection Board, mm-hmm. provides free uh, resources. Great. Um, and after that, after you have this general understanding, uh, like this, um, uh, this data privacy handbook can give you a good overview yeah, about mm-hmm. the topic. After that, I would suggest to start with trainings. Yeah, start with trainings and professional education, certification in this area. There are a lot of different possibilities, a, a lot of different certification um, you can gain. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't forget to gain both areas of knowledge, like uh, legal and um, technical, because it will be necessary for your job as the DPO really? to understand both sides. That's I agree with that. Yeah. So and... yeah, go ahead. So so Jack, you know, it's it's really a great insight you have shared about you know DPS and all that. Uh, I, I I know it's uh, we already have raised the maximum, but can I ask the last question? Which, which sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How important is the role of a DPO in the company? Um, I would say the role of DPO is very important because uh, we uh, have really complex regulations. Hmm. Um, And what I can observe uh, in my career, uh, it is not just only uh, data protection, uh, Hmm. GDPR, data protection regulation. There are a lot of different regulations. For the company, it is difficult to comply with all of them and to understand actually uh, these um, regulations. And the DPO have a key mm. role um, mm. because of, of the skills um, mm. to, uh, to help organizations with compliance mm-hmm. and to uh, implement strong processes okay. which, can, which will lead to uh, data protection. And it is also um, a benefit of the company um, to say, yeah, we have good processes. We have um, amazing compliance processes. Okay. And our products are safe. And our products are um, privacy compliant. Yeah, okay. This is a benefit nowadays on the market. Okay. And uh, I recommend companies to, uh, to try uh, to, to understand the data protection this way. Mm-hmm. And to use it as a benefit. That's great. Thanks. Uh, this this was really a the last point is really an amazing point that you have raised, Jack. And uh, it's very important for us also to understand how the process and how the all the integration works and everything. I believe that is the most important thing. So, Jack, before we wind up this session, do you want to share any last point with our subscribers and viewers, clients regarding data privacy? Uh, Sure. Um, as a DPO, um, you have to educate yourself every day. So uh, education is the most important um, task in your career. Uh, I think InfoSec train is great on that uh, in, uh, in uh, providing a lot of free uh, educational videos. I, I, I like your video, guys. Um, but uh, also use different resources, um, different subscriptions. Um, I use the most of my subscriptions are in German language, but you can also use, for instance, uh, SMU uh, guidelines. They provide, uh, this is a French uh, supervisory authority. Mm -hmm. They provide nice guidelines in English language. So stay um, on, this wheel and educate yourself. It is really important. 
that that's a very good point that that's really a, a great parameter you have set and uh, thanks thanks actually jack for uh, taking out the time for this particular session and uh, hey team do let us know shall i disturb again mr jack for another session and if yes please share me the list of topic which we have, we need to have a discussion data privacy from mr jack i'm sure jack you want to come on again on this particular show and share your insight and wisdom of thoughts on the same topics or the further deep, deep data privacy topics thank you so much for inviting me thank you so much for the session now coffee with prop i can drink my we, we, we cup also of coffee, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks jack thanks, thanks for taking out them so this is all from our side team and do let us know how do you find this session and do share your comments suggestions in the comment box we we love to listen those feedbacks which help us to motivate to make more videos and help us to improve our sessions more effectively thank you so much good day I bye will.